In this video, we will discuss protecting against insufficient authorization. We will be discussing improper access to secure areas of the website, as well as improper authority for low-level accounts. In order to understand the danger that this vulnerability presents, let's have a look at the suite's complete website. You'll notice logged in as guest, we only see the options login, our members, and shopping cart. If we now log in as the administrator user, notice the change. You'll notice that we now have a new option called admin, and the user admin is identified. As discussed in other videos, the username admin is not recommended. When we click on the admin option, you'll notice we now have the option to delete or edit selected users. Let's go ahead and log out now. Please remember that this is the incomplete website and currently we do not have a logout option. Accordingly, the only way we can log out right now is either close the browser or remove the cookies. So in this case, we are going to select clear browsing data and then make sure that all the cookies are removed. When we now go back to home, you'll notice we are again the user guest. As mentioned before, the vulnerability is insufficient authorization, but allowing access to sensitive areas. So if we change the page to admin, logged in as a guest, you'll notice we now have complete access to the admin functionality, even though we are only the user guest. So at this point, we could actually delete or edit member information, including altering the balance. This, of course, is a very, very dangerous situation. The solution lies in constructing a matrix of rights. This matrix of rights is oftentimes referred to as an access control list. Let's look at a demonstration block of code and see how this could be implemented. The file name we are looking at is protectinsufficientauthacl.php. In this case, we are going to be using the same database, the Suites Complete database. We've got a code file called init suites complete db, which is in the working files area for this chapter, which gives us a connection to the database. We are then going to define a series of what we can call roles. In this case, we've got three possibilities, guest, normal, or admin. The guest role would be for somebody visiting the website who does not have an account. The guest user is allowed access to the home page, products, specials, contact, and login. A normal user would be a combination of guest with an addition of detail, cart, and members. A normal user would be a user that has an account on the system and is logged in. Finally, we have a user level called admin, which has all of the above plus access to the admin page. We can now build a matrix where the key is the user type or role, and the value is an array of allowed pages. If we now process the login, we get the email, we get the password, we then do a database lookup. If we do have a result, we know that that username and password combination exists. We can then assign the data type depending on the user ID, bearing in mind that in this particular database, the suite's complete database, user ID of all nines is the admin user. Otherwise, we assume that the user is normal. If the user is not logged in or is unsuccessful in logging in, the default user type assigned is guest. We can then allow or deny access depending on their user type. Let's go ahead and view the results from this demonstration. So you'll notice we've got the three levels of users and three test accounts. Let's first test guest. And as you can see, for guest, we have home product specials contact and login. Let's now try a normal user. So we'll log in as Lucille Bradford. And you'll notice we now have access to home, products, specials, contact, login, detail, cart, and members. And finally, if we log in as admin, we should see the addition of admin. And as you can see at the very bottom, we have access to the admin page now. Another consideration in the same category is access for the database user. As an example, if we move over to our PHP MyAdmin interface, let's take a look at database users. You'll notice if we edit the suite's complete user, currently 
they have all privileges to the database suites complete. It's quite possible this might represent far more privileges than are necessary to accomplish the purpose. What could be done then, for example, would be to modify the privileges and to only allow, for example, select, insert, update, delete. This would give the database user sufficient privileges to perform normal operations without allowing them access to extra operations such as being able to drop tables, drop the database, alter tables, and that sort of thing. In review, regarding improper access to secure areas of the website, you need to carefully examine your program logic. You might want to consider establishing what is referred to as an access control list, which is a matrix of user types and resources that they're allowed access to. In the example shown, the user type would be guest, normal, or admin, and the resources would be the pages to which they're allowed. You would have to have very careful planning in order to implement this properly. And finally, make sure that you take customer requirements into account. Another consideration within the same topic is improper authority for low-level accounts. We need to make sure that you apply the principle of least privileges. This is especially true for database access. In the example shown, instead of allowing the database user all rights to the database, you may want to allow them a limited set of rights, such as select, insert, update, and delete.